And what I'm still seeing is that the convection, it's another word for thunderstorms, developing around the center have looked fairly healthy and consistent. I was also just now looking at the reconnaissance from yet another flight. One just ended and another one, Hurricane Hunters Air Force flying into the storm now. And it does look like they're starting to find, maybe not necessarily right at the center, but within some of these more intense thunderstorms, hurricane force winds. All that would lead me to believe the next advisory at Oh, there we go. Seven o'clock. It is now a hurricane. So this is the first time it is being classified as a hurricane and winds now of 75 miles an hour. So I guess they took that data, issued it a half hour ahead of time and have called Francine. So now a Fra Francine officially is a hurricane. Northeasterly motion at 10 miles an hour. So we really haven't seen that forward motion pick up very much at all. Pressure has also come down quite a bit at 982. That just indicates the strength of the storm. I'm looking at a, a board I have here where I've got all of our uh, coordinates kind of written down over the last couple of hours. Going back to the one o'clock advisory pressure was at 988. So it has dropped steadily over the last couple of hours. Not exactly bombing out, not exactly a rapid intensification, but it is now starting to intensify. So it's finally been able to kind of find that sweet spot in a sense for the core to begin taking advantage of the moisture, taking advantage of that tighter circulation near the center and starting to finally organize a bit more. What had been, and we were talking about this earlier, kind of a broad overall circulation in a very large area. Something that large is not going to be able to tighten up and start increasing in that uh, energy and that uh, uh, um, uh, that speed where you would start to see the winds increasing. Something that we've been watching was the fact that thunderstorms and it looked like little bursts of convection were trying to concentrate themselves right around almost the north northeastern corner of what had been an overall broad circulation. So now if and again, we didn't want to see it. It would have been great if it had stayed weak, stayed unorganized. But if it is starting to now organize and tighten up, if that is a continued trend through the rest of this evening, by the 10 o'clock advisory, I would venture to say the models, if that is a continuing trend, even going into tomorrow, I would venture to say we probably won't then see any real major adjustments to the forecast models with regards to its eventual landfall. Again, we're now closing in on well less than 24 hours before it is on land. So the wind of opportunity for further strengthening is continuing to shrink. That all is good news. Again, the forecasted track has not changed. This is the same as of the four o'clock. We're not going to see a new one until 10. But it is interesting to note that Francine is now a category one hurricane. We will see what the thinking, if there's any difference in the thinking per the Hurricane Center. But as we were just talking to Jamie Rome, it's something we, and I, and I do feel like sometimes we contradict ourselves. We don't want you to follow just the center line. We don't want you to follow just the center of the storm because obviously impacts are going to be felt well away from the center. The cone does not represent the storm itself. The cone only represents where the center of the storm is expected to be. And at this point on Wednesday afternoon, it could be on the center line. It could be a little bit farther to the west. Maybe it follows more a path toward Marsh Island, but maybe it's a little bit more to the east and following a path, taking it a little bit more into Barataria Bay, all certainly very much a possibility. And I think that's why he was saying you don't want to focus just on that center point, just on the center line and sometimes just on the cone itself because the impacts are going to be felt well away from it. However, with that said, you want to avoid the center of this storm. That is where you're going to find the strongest of the winds. That is where you're going to find at times some of the heaviest rainfall depending upon the storm, but that is where the worst of the storm will likely be right at the center. And that's where you want to avoid and trying to figure out exactly what communities, what parishes will be within that center line is what is sometimes a little trickier to figure out. Computer models again have been in decent agreement with that eventual path, but they also all fall within kind of the margin of error, maybe favoring a little bit more of the eastern side of the entire forecast casted cone, but that still really doesn't change the direct impacts to our viewing area. What it would do is change maybe those communities that are directly impacted by some of the strongest winds. Keep in mind, it'll probably maintain its strength well inland because it is going to be moving so quickly. Note though, if we are able to find winds of 75 miles an hour right around the center, we have a buoy that is not too far to the east. 
it is only reporting 30 mile an hour winds and gusting up to 40. Unless this wind field dramatically increases, the strongest of the winds are not going to be over a large area. They're going to be right near the center. Jamie also talked about the double edged sword with dry air. Sometimes that allows those winds to kind of spread out. Might keep the storm a little bit weaker, but sometimes that dry air kind of allows those stronger winds to spread out a little bit. We will see what the impacts are with regards to the dry air and wind shear as we get a, bit, a little bit closer to us. 